So I always kind of like to get started with uh, my story, just kind of my journey and why I do this. Um, I was someone that grew up super active. I was um, at the age of two put into sports because I had, had so much energy. So um, by I think the age of five, I was in full-fledged competitive gymnastics. I then went on to play soccer, college soccer, semi-professional soccer, marathon training. And literally by the end of my 20s, my body was completely falling apart. And while I looked really good on the outside, like I looked like I was fit and healthy on the inside, it was a completely different picture. I was exhausted. I literally would come home from work, having to take naps before going out to dinner with friends. And I thought this was normal because I was in school for like 10 years collecting degrees. I have my uh, master's in exercise physiology as well as physical therapy. And uh, I just thought that this is just what it what it's supposed to be like. And I, I know a lot of people can relate because I hear this all the time from my patients where they go to the doctor, they're like, they know something's wrong, but they can't find anything wrong. And that was kind of how I was. I was getting sick all the time. My allergies were horrific. Uh, I um, literally in like a year and a half period of time, I had bronchitis, pneumonia, and then cancer. And my cancer was basically a virus and uh, I couldn't get rid of it. So uh, I was going to the doctor every four months and everything was, nothing was changing and went through two and a half years, two surgeries and they wanted to do a third surgery. They said, I'm done because we're not helping the situation. Like what else can I do? And they literally said, there's nothing. And so at that point I was like, okay, I know there's things that I can do and I need to start, make, start doing some more research and, and looking into what else. At the same time, one of my friends who I played soccer with in college, she worked with some of the top plant-based doctors. She was reaching out because she had found this uh, amazing product called Juice Plus. It was, it's basically just a salad in a bar in, in a capsule. And she was excited to share this with me because she thought I'd be inter interested in that with my clientele, not knowing anything that was going on with me. And I literally turned her down for a year because I was like, no, I really don't believe in supplements. I know the research, there's no research on it. I know the research on synthetic supplements and I just didn't really understand. And I wasn't really open to learning until I hit my low point. And when I did, I started doing research and looking into um, you know, what else I could do. And Juice Plus kept on popping up and I called her and said, okay, I, this is what's going on with me and I'm ready to get started. And at the, at the time, I just, I, I was so exhausted. I couldn't even think of like making any big significant changes because it just was going to be too overwhelming for me. So for, for me, this was a good starting place. And I started taking uh, Juice Plus. And within four months, going back to the doctor, uh, everything was normal. I was young. Um, it was enough nutrition to allow my body to heal. And, um, and at that point I was like, holy cow, this is just fruits and vegetables. Um, I'm obviously not eating enough. And I could tell you there was probably two and three days where I didn't have a single fruit or vegetable because I did a lot of cereal and carb loading with pastas and, and different things like that. And I honestly was a picky eater. And so I started making some, some changes. It was a catalyst for me to make some other changes and for me to continue my learning. And, and that's kind of, as I continued to learn more, I got more pissed off because I was like, why as a healthcare provider, are there not people out there sharing this information? Because literally doctors get zero education in nutrition and which I think is a crime because it's the first place that we need to get started with people. And so that's kind of what we, what, what um, it's kind of my story to, helped me really bring myself into this community a little bit. This is my husband and we love to travel and he also had a lot of issues with he had stomach issues like for 10 years like I don't know he probably had eight or nine colonoscopies the doctors couldn't figure out what was going on and I kept on telling him as I was going through my journey that it's probably diet related um, because he was a meat, meat and potatoes guy did not eat a lot of plants at all um, but I couldn't get him to make changes, but I finally, he finally said yes to getting started with Juice Plus, and oh my gosh, I remember the first day, he took uh, the normal dose that he was supposed to, and uh, literally he was in the bathroom all day long because his body was detoxing so much, and he, he said, we'll discuss this when I get back, because he was going to, to China the next day for work, and I was like, oh my gosh, he's not gonna, he's not gonna 
get started with this? Well, he came back, we started him really slow, which I find, find out later, you know, when you have a lot of gut issues, you're going to have to start out really slow um, so that your body can kind of adjust to that. And his body did. And sure enough, his bloating and his, and his stomach pain started going away. And he started coming in asking for like salads and fruit. And I'm like, who are you? And what did you do with my husband? Because I could never get him to eat that. And so it was just, again, another way for him for, you know, as you're flooding your body with some of these nutrients, it's your, your cravings start changing. And that's kind of exactly what's happened. And, and we're really a community of people. Um, we call ourselves Health Made Simple because we, we really try to make it simple, just like these recipes. Um, we're trying to make the recipe simple so people can have ideas that they can make, you know, more plant based meals um, at home. And we have partnered with a lot of people. And the thing that I love about this community is the fact that I have people I can refer people to. Like there, I can't tell you how many people I've referred within my patients to people in this community to help them improve whatever situation it is, whether it's yoga or a doctor or um, a personal trainer or whatever. I've learned so much with the people in this community. Um, and, and I've been able to refer out to people to really help and you know, make bigger impacts in, into people's lives. So let's go into why. Like the news is that fruits and vegetables aren't just, aren't good for you. It's just that they could actually really save your life. And it is, and it's so true. And if you think about it, what it is, is if you look at the process, if we take a deep breath in and then we exhale, we have to use that oxygen. We use that oxygen so that we, um, you know, we have to, to live. But the byproduct of us using that oxygen is the fact that it produces oxidative stress in our body, that free radical damage. And so that basically is, I mean, if you look at the, the process of most of the diseases, it's that free radical damage. Your genes will kind of dictate some of that for you. For me, everything that affected me was always hormonal. For someone else, it may be um, heart related. For someone else, it could be autoimmune related. You know, that's where the genes dictate it, but that doesn't dictate your life. And so when we have all this oxidative stress building up day after day, year after year, what ha that's what really produces the aging process, the disease process, and how you can neutralize that oxidative stress is by adding plants, because plants have antioxidants, and the more antioxidants that we can get into our body with the variety, the color, they all affect our body differently, that reduces that oxidative stress, and that's really simplistically what it's all about. And that's, that's why plants are so important. A couple of movies that are amazing. There's so many out there, but the first one that really came out was Forks Over Knives. And that's the one, I mean, like that was, I, that's based off the China study, which is the first book that I read. Um, Cause as I started reading, reading more, I was like, well, I'm going to go and look and see what this condition shows. And I'm like, so it'd be cancer. Okay. Fruits and vegetables, diabetes. It was fruits and vegetables, heart disease. It was fruits and vegetables. Like everything led me down that path. And these are some amazing stories that you'll see um, in some of these movies on like what plants can really do. And they're ones that I highly recommend um, you guys to watch so that you can kind of continue your learning. And you know, the recipes, I can tell you, plant, you won't miss the meat <laughs> because you'll start eating some of these meals and you're like, oh my God, not only will you feel better, but the taste is, is pretty amazing. I'm so excited some of these recipes. I literally have been wanting to, try the uh, stuffed uh, peppers. And I'm so excited to try those today. So one of the things, you know, we're a community of people and we love to provide education so that we can really help people make better decisions about their health. And we do it virtually like this. And we have meal prep classes and cooking demos, very similar to this. We have community outreach things that we do that are live. We just haven't been able to do them recently. <laughs> Um, we have healthy living workshops. We have just a lot of ways that we can provide support and education for people to, um, you know, just start making small changes because that's what it ha that's that's where we have to start. We have so many different resources. Um, we have the Shred Ten guidelines. We're going to talk about that here in a second. We have plant-based cookbooks. We have fitness videos. We have family resources. We have so many things that we can provide education. Um, for you guys. And if you're interested in any of these, please get with the person that invited you onto this talk because they can link you to um, a lot of these resources that we have. So 
I love the shred program. It's not where everyone starts. Sometimes it's, it's where people start, but sometimes you have to start slow, kind of how I was. But when you can really start adding some of these guidelines in, you're really going to take your health to a next level. And that's some of the things I've had other things that have happened to me in, in the past where I've had to really be even better with my diet and the better I've, I've been with my diet, the better I've been able to navigate my body and understand my body and the better I feel. The 10 guidelines are really just adding more plant foods with the juice plus capsules. And we'll talk about those a little bit more. Um, adding a complete shake. Shake I have literally changed my life. That's like my new cereal. It's so easy for me to do to like make one and go. And it's like a no brainer food for me. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Adding plenty of water, adding seven to eight hours of sleep, um, adding exercise most days of the week, reducing or eliminating eating after six. And really like you just want to give your body a good 12 to 14 hours of rest, complete rest where it's not constantly having to digest food so that your body, like when we can give our body rest, that's, that's when we start healing is when we, at night, when we can rest our body. Um, reducing or eliminating processed foods, reducing or eliminating caffeine and alcohol, um, eliminating gluten and dairy, and eliminating refined and artificial sugars. So these are the guidelines. There's a lot of different ways we implement this. So um, if, again, if it's something that you're interested in, definitely talk to the person that invited you. We have so many resources and education as to why we have a lot of these rules. We also have a plant, um, Power by Plants Health Made Simple Facebook community, where again, we provide a lot of recipes, education, just, um, just other ways that we can provide value for you guys um, as you guys are on your journey to better health. So one of the things I love is finding ways to get more plants into our body. And this is the coolest way. It's called the Tower Garden, and it really is the future of growing. Um, as we know, you know, our soil is starting to be depleted, and that's where we get a lot of the nutrients from our, from our food. So if the soil is not very good, you're not going to have very nutritious food. But here, we literally have the same nu nutrients that we have in the soil, we have in a liquid form. And so you're getting this into plants through water. Water comes to the top of it, sprinkles on the roots, and literally the food will grow so much faster. And they have this with research. They actually looked at um, the tower garden and how much it produced compared to the best farmers and the best conditions. And this is what the research showed. It showed that we use 98% less water, which is pretty phenomenal, using the tower garden system. 90% less space, 30% more yield, three times faster. And again, it was just as safe and if not more nutritious because it was constantly getting these nutrients hitting the, um, the roots like every 15 minutes. And these are just some pictures of the tower garden. And let me tell you, if you have kids, they will love growing the food and watching it grow and understanding it and they will eat it because they're growing it. So that, that part of it's really cool. So why do we need seven to 13 servings? That seems like it's a lot <laughs> and it may seem like it's a lot, but remember the more we get, the more we're, we're neutralizing that oxidative stress. And as an athlete like myself, you need even more, which is why, you know, finding ways to get more into our body from doing smoothies or juice plus is key. And the reason why as an athlete you need more is think of that room, that scenario where I was talking about, we breathe in more oxygen, we're breathing in oxygen, we use that and that produces oxidative stress in our body. Well, when you're an athlete, what happens? You're breathing in double or triple the amount of oxygen because you're exercising so much. And when you exercise a lot, and you breathe in more oxygen, you're producing more damage, which is why you see a lot of these athletes having issues um, in their late 20s, early 30s, um, and beyond, because you really need to, to be even better with your diet, otherwise you're gonna have problems, similar to what I had. So again, we talked about, you know, the produce is picked before nutrition is fully developed. So when you pick it vine right, you literally get the most nutrition in those last like day or so of picking that fruit vine ripe. So when you pick it so early, you're, you're losing a lot of the nutrition that we get. And that's kind of what happens is we pick it because it's going to be transported thousands of miles away. So if you're looking at getting food more local, go to your farmer's markets and things like that, because they're definitely going to be better. 
90% of Americans do not eat enough um, servings. Um, and I want to say like, you know, two to three servings is probably as on average, it probably is even less than that, what people get per day, which is just not enough. When it's why we, we have so many health issues in this country. Don't get enough variety um, from the rainbow. And that's key. Like every color affects us differently. I can tell you for myself when it's summertime and it's springtime or it's fall, I tend to eat the exact same types of food over and over again. So for me, eating that variety is really key on helping me continue to stay healthy, especially as we go into the fall. So really what I love is that, you know, what we should eat and what we probably are eating, it's not really the same thing. And this really kind of helps bridge the gap. It's not in a replacement for, we don't, we don't ever say that it's replacing anything. It's an addition to, um, and that's really key. So let's talk a little bit about multivitamins because when we, think of multivitamins, this is what most people, you know, I'd say like 70% of Americans are really trying to fill in the gaps because they know that there's a gap. So when you look at a multivitamin, a multivitamin is synthetic and, you know, versus like whole foods. So you take an apple, in one apple, there's, you know, at least 10,000 different types of phytonutrients that work together. And so when you eat an apple, our body knows what it needs to take. Like your body will take something different than my body, but it's everything working synergistically together is how we get that food to absorb. When you have a multivitamin, it's basically manufactured. So we think that these are the most important pieces out of that food. And what ends up happening is it doesn't get absorbed in our body. Um, and some research is actually showing that it's doing more damage. It's actually producing more oxidative stress because our body doesn't know what to do with it. Um, and a lot of times we're just peeing it out, peeing it out and pooping it out. So you really want something that your body recognizes and can absorb and it knows what to do with whole food nutrition. And that's why I love all these different options. We have capsules that are plant-based. I love the color because the color shows you that there's no fillers, that it's actually the foods. We have the tower guard and we have the the only one that I know of that's out there, which is a full spectrum plant-based omega, we'll talk about that in a second. And then I love the powder, the plant-based protein powder, um, which is, uh, a mate, oh my God, the best tasting protein powder I've had. So these are all the 30 different types of produce that are in Juice Plus. They grow their own food. We're gonna show that here in a second. This is where I had to start because I was so exhausted for me to make a lot of changes. It it didn't, um, it didn't, uh, it was, it was difficult for me, but I can tell you after about four months, like I went back to the doctor, everything was normal for the first time. And it took me about six months where I started noticing that my energy levels were getting better. Like I wasn't crashing at the end of the day. I wasn't having to take nap. My allergies were starting to go away. I was, you know, because I was having more energy, I was wanting to add more things into what I was already doing. So when I say it was a catalyst for me to make bigger changes, it, that's exactly what it was. Here's a little video we can watch about bee farms. The fact that we actually grow a lot of these products very close to the factory, and we can preserve the freshness. They can be harvested and processed within just a couple hours of when they come out of the field, as opposed to maybe some of the produce you might buy in the store where it has to go through uh, trucking and shipping and a lot of different steps to be available to you. These processes that we do are done just within a few hours of when the product's harvested. From the farm through our plant, the fresh product actually only takes about six hours. When the product arrives at our farm processing plant, the product is tumbled, washed, and cleaned. The clean product is then laid out over the processing belt and slowly moved through sub-zero air. When we're doing that, we're able to freeze the product and preserve all the freshness of the product just as if it was from the field. The sooner you can lower the temperature and control the temperature, the more you can lock in the nutrients. When Juice Plus is looking for nutritional quality, color is very important. Most people associate a dark red cranberry as a sign of the ripeness of that fruit. Freshness is very important. There's a very short amount of time from when they're harvested to when they're frozen, locking in the freshness and nutrients. While we're producing the Juice Plus powders, they have very high standards for the purity of their powders, what can go into their powders. 
They also have tight controls over their supply lines. They know which farms it comes from, and they have a good control over that. Also, when the products are produced, they have certain steps throughout the process for safety and purity. My favorite part of working with Juice Plus is knowing that people are benefiting from what we're doing. We put a lot of work into how we grow our ingredients and how we process them so that they're safe and high quality and nutritious. It's neat to see the results of that by seeing the customers that use them and seeing their lives improved from some of the healthy ingredients and produce that we process. So this is my mom. She's almost 80 years old. And uh, we've been working with her, I've been working with her on just changing her diet and adding a lot of the stuff that we've talked about today. And she literally, this was like, I don't know, three months ago, we were in Austin, Texas, and we walked up Enchanted Rock, which is like one of the biggest rocks in the United States. And it, it's pretty steep. And she made it all the way up and all the way back down, uh, which is pretty phenomenal for someone that is almost 80 years old. These are the plant-based omegas that I was talking to you about. And it's 100% plant-based, pure, sustainable, full spectrum. So it has all the omegas. It's not just omega three, it's all of them. You know, a lot of times, you know, I was on an omega because that's what my doctor had put me on. Um, and you do fish oil. And so the reason why fish have omega is because fish actually eat the seaweed, which the seaweed is what has the omegas in it. And so we just taken the fish out of it and went right directly to the seaweed, which is a much better way of sourcing anyway. But yeah, so you say have algae oil, sea, um, buckthorn, pomegranate oil, tomato seed, sunflower seed, raspberry seed. So these, um, when I switched over to this, the biggest things that I noticed was my joints feeling better, my skin looking better, my nails and my hair were so much better. Um, it, 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 it was noticeable difference compared to when I was just doing the fish oil. I really didn't notice that much of a difference. These are some of the yummy meals. Um, one of the things that I love to do and we'll kind of talk about is like on Sunday, that's usually when I'm going shopping for my whole entire week to figure out what I'm going to cook. And I usually try to make something new for the most part on, on Sunday and just trying diff different things. And then during the week, I make the meals that are pretty easy and simple. Complete shakes, shakes literally have transformed my life because they are so easy. I am a super busy person running a PT practice. Uh, and um, this literally, if I don't have time, I can just blend a shake and go. I can make it in the morning. I, I do them for lunch sometimes or for a snack. Like it's just an easy thing for me to do. And I love this because you're literally getting more different types of, of produce from broccoli, radish, alfalfa, chickpea, quinoa, amaranth, pea protein, rice protein, and it's a water washed uh, like soy edamame, which is super healthy. If you want to understand some of the myths that are out there around that, please get with us because we can give you some some information around that. It's the most complete protein that you can get. And then mushrooms. Mushroom is the only food item where you can get vitamin D. So you actually get vitamin D from the complete. Most of the time we get our vitamin D from the sun. So this is another way of, of really increasing that. So the things that I love about, and ultimately what's got me taking the products is that it's just food. It's not a multivitamin. Our body recognizes it. It has a food label on it. It's vegan. It's kosher. It's dairy, gluten-free. Um, it's made with non-GMO ingredients. Um, it's vine ripe, picked, frozen, and blended. Like it, everything gets blended. The core, the rind, the seeds, things that we don't typically eat that have a ton of nutrition. It's NSF certified. So it's third-party certification, which is pretty fantastic. So you know, what's in the label is actually what's in it. There's no contaminant, pesticides, banned substances. This product literally gets tested at seven different times to make sure there's nothing bad that's in it so, if they, so they don't miss anything. And then ultimately, as a healthcare provider, it's the most researched product in the world. There's more research on this product than most of the drugs that doctors pass out. And the research is high quality. Again, done by third party. Um, they're, they're done by, the, Juice Plus isn't paying for the investigation, which is what happens with most of the uh, drugs that doctors pass out. The, they are actually getting paid to do the research on the product. These are third party, like institutions that whatever they find is what they find. And the quality of the research is pretty fantastic. As a healthcare provider, it's, um, it's like the highest quality that you can get. And really it's pretty affordable. When I think of like juicing, <laughs> 
which is essentially the best way to equate this is juicing without the mess. To get 30 different produce into your body every single day for $2.50 for me is pretty fantastic. Um, kids get it for free. It completes about two thirty three, which is again, a, a cheap meal that you can make for yourself. And the omegas is about a dollar a day, which is really comparable to a fish oil um, type product. Knowing the benefits that you see, like this is research, this is an ongoing research that's been going on um, for a really long time with kids and adults. And what they found was that, that when they started taking, they basically looked at people at four months, six months, um, 12 months, and then one year. Um, and every year that goes by, these numbers actually get better and better is what they found, which is kind of what I found with my health as well too. But 60% fewer days miss of school, 56% taking fewer over-counter medications or prescription drugs. They're 71% drinking more water. 60%, 66% were visiting the doctor less. 71% were consuming less fast food and soft drinks. And 61% were eating more fruits and vegetables. Which if you look at that, the cost of what that does for you, I mean, it more than pays for itself. This is a community. We have a lot of community events that we do. This is just what some of the things that we do in Dallas. I know we have them all over the place. Um, all over the country where we do these fun, fun events. And I know we can't wait to get back to doing them live again. So six simple steps to plant-based meal prep. You know, soup and stew are great things to make, especially as we get into the fall. You can make it and then you can freeze part of it so that maybe in a year um, or like three months down the road, it's like, I'm busy. Oh, let me go and pull the stew out and then, and, and then recook it and make it for my family. Salad and, and uh, Power Bowl, something that you can layer and, and prep in jars that are super easy. Um, supper, again, that's kind of what I do. At least one special dinner recipe. And that's usually what I do on Sunday is like I plan out like, okay, I have time on Sunday. I'm gonna make something new and try something new. Smoothie and breakfast treats. Oh my gosh, can I tell you, there's so many things you can do with the plant-based protein powder with overnight oats, the chia pudding to breakfast cookies, energy bites as well as smoothie bowls and smoothies. There, it literally is so versatile. Snacks, wash, wash and cut fresh produce that you can store in the refrigerator. Um, if you have things that are already chopped up, the likelihood of you eating them is going to be pretty high. Save a day of supply. So freeze meals, unrefrigerate power bowl ingredients, can jar goods, um, whole food grains on hand that you can just always throw into a salad or um, saute veggies and throw on top. So these are all different ideas of, of quick and easy things that we can do. So this is our shopping list. We're going to get to Jennifer is going to be the first person Here we go to make the oats in a jar. No, it's not an oats in a jar. Sorry, the baked oats. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Can you guys hear me and can you see Thank you. I had to go to plan B. So as Stephanie was talking, I was switching out my technology and I'm like, oh my gosh, is this gonna work? Um, so just briefly as an introduction, I know some of you, but not everyone. So my name is Jennifer Porter. I currently live in Fort Myers, Florida, but I'm from Southern California originally. I have three kids and up until August, 19th, I homeschooled all three of them, but this last, this, this is the first year that my oldest is actually going to a brick and mortar school. So what a year to send her to a physical school. Crazy, but it's being, it's working out awesome. So in Southern California, uh, for like four years ago or so, we moved uh, from there to here. But while I was there, I thought we were doing pretty good as the family. There were two out of five of us who had allergies and my son had a nebulizer and I thought that was pretty typical. I cooked at home. I made really yummy lasagna and um, enchiladas, quesadillas, uh, chicken casserole that had this amazing cream sauce. And I thought I was doing well because we were eating at home. We didn't have money to eat out and you know, home cooked meals are always healthier, right? Well, I also struggled with a picky eater and often sent my kids to bed after having a bowl of honey nut Cheerios or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich because it was just, I was, you know, my, my threw my hands up. I was like, you need to eat something before you go to bed, which is pretty typical if you ask a lot of moms, like we're all throwing our hands up. If you have more than one child, 
more likely one than not one of them is picky. And so what I found in this community was while I was typical with our allergies, it wasn't necessarily normal. And while I was cooking home cooked meals, they were not healthy. I mean, using a, a whole can, um, not can, but a pint of cream sauce for chicken gelatas. I mean, it made it taste amazing, but I wasn't feeding my family things that were really healthy. And the Honey Nut Cheerios is not the healthiest dinner option if you, if you, um, if you really think about it, but I was desperate. That's what I thought everyone did. So this community helped me realize that it doesn't have to be that way. And I can cook meals, I can, I can lower my stress, simplify my life. It doesn't have to be um, Julia Child's meals. I could lower, you know, like I said, my stress. And not only that, but I learned how I could take care of my kids without first reaching for the medicine cabinet. And all moms I talk to, we don't want our kids to have to take medicine if they don't have to, right? No, nobody does. So I regrouped and to me, it became really, really important to, for them to have a good foundation and fill in those gaps of where they were not eating all of the rainbow every day. And that was a huge catalyst. This community came in as well. Like I said, I learned tools and resources and I'm super excited now that when my kids get sick, uh, if they have anything, I am equipped now to help them without, like I said, first going for the meds. And actually my daughter now doesn't even want to take any meds. She has an expander in her mouth and the doctor's like, oh, give her, um, I don't know what they said, acetaminophen or ibuprofen. I don't even know. She won't take it. She just puts ice cubes in her mouth and she endures and goes to sleep. So the girl's, she's, she's amazing. Anyway, um, so part of this community, I get to wake up with passion and purpose every day because I get to help mamas who are just like me. And that makes me so excited because I didn't know any different. I thought I was doing okay, but now my kids are thriving. And yes, they're still, some of them are still picky, but I don't have any guilt anymore because I know that they're getting good nutrition every single day. And especially with schedules and my kid, you know, the first year my child's in a brick and mortar school, she has to wear a mask, but I'm comforted knowing that she's taking, you know, she's taking juice plus, she's having a smoothie, she's eating those vegetables. Um, and she's a preteen. So if I can get the smoothie into her and juice plus, like, guys, that's huge. It's huge. Um, anyway, so now I'm going to start with the baked oatmeal. That was just a little background on me. Hopefully you guys have some things measured out and prepped. This is a super easy recipe. I'm actually doubling it. So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, literally, you're throwing all the ingredients in the bowl, all right? And then we're mixing it up. So I have my oats. I already measured it out. I'm going to throw my oats in. I put my nuts in here. You don't, I didn't have pecans, so I used walnuts. You don't have to use any nuts. Just literally toss it in. Voila. And we're going to go down the list here. Uh, cinnamon. I would be generous on your cinnamon. I like cinnamon. Cinnamon's an antioxidant, by the way. So if you're doing just the standard recipe, I would do two teaspoons. I'm actually going to double that and uh, be generous. The other thing, I, I wish I had pumpkin spice. I don't, so I'm gonna throw in some allspice, but you don't have to, and I have no idea how this is gonna turn out because I'm not measuring, <laughs> I'm not measuring it. And guys, you, I hope this makes you laugh. When I was in college, I knew nothing about cooking. I was in Spain and I didn't know what to make for food, so I knew I could boil water and make pasta, so I did that. And then I thought I could make a bechamel sauce, not even knowing what it was. And I did water and flour. I, I sauteed flour and I mixed it with water and I put that on my pasta. And, and later on, I told my best friend that I did that. And she said, Jennifer, you just made paper mache. And not only <laughs> you just ate paper mache as your sauce. I was like, oh my goodness, that's, that's how far I've come. All right, so don't make paper mache. Um, maple syrup. Quarter cup of maple syrup. Where did my cup? Oh, you know what? I'm gonna go for my almond milk first because I already had this poured out. But again, it doesn't really matter the order. So your measurement should be three fourths of a cup of almond milk. I'm doing a cup and a half. This recipe is very forgiving. And now maple syrup. 
It's a fourth of a cup. I'm doubling it, so I'm gonna do half a cup maple syrup. Now a cup of pumpkin. And again, you can actually make this with applesauce too. I just decided to do pumpkin because I had cans of pumpkin and I like it better with pumpkin. So throw in your, your can of pumpkin. And again, I'm doubling it. So I'm gonna do two cups. If y'all have any questions or if I'm going too fast, then put some in the comments and Stephanie, you'll have to flag me because I see you on my screen. I don't see Jay Shree on my screen on my phone. Okay, melted coconut. Hopefully you have melted coconut. If not, you can put some on the pan. I don't use a microwave, but you can put some in a pan and melt it and then add it in um, later before you put it into your dish to cook. I happen to have it melted. So that is two tablespoons melted coconut. Hey y'all, I really like cooking with coconut because when I measure it out, I always have extra on the teaspoon and then I just rub it on my arms <laughs> as I'm cooking in the kitchen. It's, it's great, it's coconut oil. Did I say coconut milk, coconut oil? Okay, almond milk, we already put that in. Fourth a teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon baking soda. I already have mine measured. So dump that in. So fourth of teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon baking soda, and then your uh, pecans or nuts. And lastly, I am going to. If, put I'm sorry. In. If you it says one scoop of the vanilla complete. If you have it in packets, is that two packets? It's one packet. One. I'm, I'm doubling it. So would that be two? I'm sorry. Yep. Okay. Thank two. you. You, yep, very good question. That reminded me because I was just about to put one scoop in. So thank you, Chris, because I was going to forget. So like Stephanie said, the Juice Plus Complete saved her with her smoothies. But the coolest thing is you can put it in food and get extra veggies into your kids without them even knowing it. Like that to me is, hey, that's a win. We make pudding out of the chocolate and it's amazing. All right, so hopefully you guys have got your ingredients and you're stirring it up. And if you don't have Juice Plus Complete, that's okay, you can make it without it. I am all about finding ways to get veggies into my kids in whatever entry door I can. So if I can add it in, I will. Because I don't know about you, but my kids don't eat spirulina on their own or broccoli sprout. Okay, now y'all, the, the, one of the coolest things about baking without using any eggs is you get to taste the raw batter and you don't have to worry about salmonella or anything like that. Hmm. We've been known in our house just to like take spoonfuls of things like this and eat it without it even being cooked, but we'll cook this one. So hopefully you guys are ready to put it in a pan. Um, if you haven't turned on your oven to 375, you can go ahead and do that. And then when it's ready, you can plop it in the oven. I can only see a couple of you on the screen. So if you if you try a little spoonful of yours, give give yourself a give us a thumbs up. Did anybody try it? 
John, is Jackie making it in the back? Oh, she's good. Yeah. <laughs> Jackie tried it. Excellent. Chris, how you doing? Doing good? Okay. All right. Well, that's it, y'all. <laughs> it's definitely doesn't it taste good? And the fact that you know that you're not gonna get sick, there's no eggs in there. It's awesome. All right. Well, um, I'm gonna hand it over now to Jackie and John, and they are going to do the uh, stuffed peppers. So Jackie and John, I'm gonna mute myself and hand it over to you guys. Thank you. Can you hear me? Thumbs up. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for taking time today to um, uh, come help us uh, do this meal prep. And um, uh, a little bit about us and how we got into uh, the plant powders in the community was about eight years ago, we started taking them because I was on two cholesterol medicines. And I just, I was at that point where I exercised, but I couldn't exercise enough. And um, at the suggestion of our son and daughter-in-law, they said, well, you might think about taking Juice Plus. So uh, long story short, about four years ago, I went in for my regular uh, physical and uh, blood work. And my doctor was really impressed with where my cholesterol was. So she took me off one of the medicines and um, at that point, I said, well, I'm, you will take me off of the other one in another year. She said, well, we'll see. Well, sure enough, I was able to uh, go back uh, after another year of physical. My lipid panels were all in the normal range. And so she took me off of that. And, but truth be known, uh, as Stephanie mentioned about the education of the community, I became a little more educated on uh, whole food nutrition and I learned that I didn't have to have red meat or cheese. Uh, I could survive without it. And I learned also that uh, I didn't have to have meat every day. And a result of that was, uh, yeah, we still have the occasional uh, white meat, the pork or the chicken. Uh, red meat is something that we just don't uh, have anymore. They're not friendly to me, but it's it's not worth the issue of having higher cholesterol and, and slipping back into that. So that's how we got into it. That's and, good. They can see you. Uh, can you all see me okay? Okay. Um, yeah. Then Jackie got in. Uh, part of the side benefit of that was uh, with the... Uh, the vineyard and the other plant capsules, uh, she was able to uh, get off the uh, her nasal sprays and things like that. And I'll let her kind of tell her story. Well, mine's really quick. Uh, it's really simple. Um, I've started on it because it just made sense. And I thought, uh, I knew we didn't eat enough fruits and vegetables, though I really thought we were eating healthy. Um, what I learned was that there was more that we could do. And so that's what I, uh, why I wanted to start on it, um, other than what John has already told you. So, uh, and I'm rejoicing that I don't have the issues that I had nine years ago. And I didn't realize until about three months after I'd received uh, Juice Plus and been taking it, that all of a sudden my daughter-in-law said to me, you know, I noticed you haven't been using that nasal spray you used to carry around all the time. And sure enough, I hadn't. So I'm rejoicing over that. So uh, I'm going to let John, this is John's dish. He has, um, I've done it a couple of times, but he's done it many, many times for us. So he's going to give you the ins and outs of the quinoa stuffed peppers. <laughs> Thank Take you. it away. Okay. Well, um, my feeling with the, uh, the menu, the recipes, 
is they're a good outline for starting a recipe. Now, I love to cook, and so if there's an ingredient that I think, oh, you know, that might be kind of good in there, I'll stick it in there. Maybe yes, maybe no. But this is one of those recipes that I pretty much follow, and uh, it's so easy. Again, it's a matter of putting all the ingredients from the, um, from the salsa all the way down to the corn and mixing it up. And, and I don't know if you, can, if you can see what we've got going here, but we've got the quinoa, the corn, the black beans. All and left in a bowl. All in a bowl. And unfortunately, my bowl is a little small after I got it all in here. Ta-da! So, so my kitchen assistant <laughs> is going to help me out here. We'll mix it into a bigger bowl. So hopefully you've been able to pre-cook pre the quinoa. I mean, how, how difficult is it to open a can of corn and a can of beans? Now, the, the recipe calls for a cup of corn. And actually, I like a little more corn. So you can use, if you want to use more, you can. If you want to use a whole can of corn, you can do that. I've done that. So then we're going to add the cumin, the chili pepper, the nutritional yeast, and the garlic powder. Get that all in there. Mix it up. And then the salsa. And what we usually do is we prep the the peppers ahead of time so that and cut them in half because a half uh, with a side dish and a salad is enough for each of us, but um, depending on the size of your peppers, you can either stuff them whole or you can stuff them uh, in the halves. Today we've cut them in the halves. John will show you in a minute. Yeah. So there's, if you can see the peppers, we did the half. Now we've also just cut the top off and stuff the whole pepper. And this recipe makes a serving of four and what basically that means is they're, they're cutting it in half and, and um, stuffing the whole pepper. Now also, I don't, it calls for salt and pepper and I do not use salt, but I will be generous <laughs> with the pepper. If a little pepper's good, a lot more is better, right? And the other thing is we've only sliced up three peppers. It calls for four, like I said, but if you have leftover ingredients, just put it in a container and freeze it. And so now we are at the point where we're going to stuff the peppers. I don't know, can you see the peppers? Can you see them? Okay. Uh, the other thing it calls for is a lightly greased baking dish. And also, uh, we use uh, grapeseed oil and take a little grapeseed oil and, and put a little bit in each pepper and then with a brush or your finger or a paper towel, wipe the inside. All right, there you go. Awesome. <laughs> Jennifer's got it. Okay, so now, now we're going to put the stuffing in. And I use a, a spoon so I can really pack it into the pepper, get it into all the little crevices. And you can make a whole bunch at one time, which is really great. Um, and then freeze them and pull them out and uh, pop them in the oven like you would a pizza or something. Keep them frozen until they're ready to pop in and cook them. Or just refrigerate them if you're going to do like some tonight and some later this week. They'll be fine for a couple of days. Jackie. What? Are you saying, are you saying stuff them in the pepper and put them in the freezer stuffed in the pepper? Or, or put the innards? 
You can do either, either way. way. Either, either way. way. <laughs> and do you stuff these? I've never made stuffed peppers. I'm super excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're really okay. good. Yeah, sure. There you, there you go. They mound, can be puffy. Mound it up. Okay. Uh, mound it up. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Because I can tell you right now, we have more stuffing than we have peppers. But yeah, that's okay. and, the, and the other thing that you can do with the pet with the stuff the leftovers is uh, when you bake it, just warm the leftovers up and make a bed of the leftovers and lay the pepper on it. That's good too. We get creative with them. <clears throat> John, can you hold up one of the peppers again? Yeah. Can you see it? Perfect. I got a picture of you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing while he's stuffing those I can talk about is there's some um, options on your dish. It's called toppings on the recipe. And what we like to do is when we're ready to serve them, we'll take an avocado and slice it and just lay the avocado on top of the peppers, the stuffed peppers after they've cooked. Everybody got theirs put together? Yes. Judy, you got yours put together? You got it. Awesome. <laughs> Are you gonna share with Fred? No. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so so John, I kind of cheated and I used I used Rotel for my salsa. That's fine. That's okay. Okay. You can actually use your leftover salsa um as a topping on your pe uh, stuffed peppers after they're cooked or before you cook it. But if you don't cook it tonight, Jennifer, I doubt there'll be any salsa left. <laughs> if it's like our house with the teenagers. <laughs> salsa is its own food group, chips and salsa in Texas. It is, yes, uh, absolutely. You done? Yep. Okay. okay. Um, Can you guys talk to us a little bit about like what nutritional yeast is and why it's better than salt and pepper or whatever. Like what's the thought process behind that? I'm going to let Stephanie jump in there. Stephanie. So um, this is Jay oh, Tree. Oh, we'll, answer that, we'll answer that question at the end because Stephanie still has to present hers. And then that way um, we can answer all questions at the end. Okay. Uh, there you go. I, can you see that? I don't know if you could see that. Oh yeah, I see Judy's. Oh, look Looks at amazing. That. Oh, they're all ready. <laughs> Guess what's for dinner tonight? I know. Well, actually, tonight I'm doing that curry because that's new to us. So, so um, yes, the curry dish is amazing. Um, do you want me to get started with that while you, you guys put that in the oven? Because that's the rest. Can you tell, can you tell uh, uh, Chris about nutritional yeast? She had a question on it. Yeah, I, um, how about if I get started and I'll kind of talk about it a little bit and then Jay Shree can finish up with whatever I didn't touch on the nutritional yeast. Okay. That way we can kind of wrap this up a little bit. Um, okay, so okay, this curry dish is so, so easy, especially if you have everything ready to go, which I do. So, um, if you don't want to use olive oil, um, I just use water to saute. So that's like a, a, a trick that you can use. So if you don't want to use olive oil and, uh, um, or anything like that, you just can saute with like a little bit of water. You just have to kind of keep on putting a little bit of water in there. So that's what I'm going to do. So you're going to have your jalapeno peppers, which are about to kill me because they, they are so potent, um, and your shallots. So you're going to dump those in your pot here. No, hold off. You have your chopped up garlic. I think we'll hold off. This is garlic. Throw it in the pot. 
And then you have your chopped up um, ginger. Again, throw it in the pot. We're just gonna saute that just a little bit. I'm just gonna use a little bit of water. There we go. And we're gonna cook this for a couple of minutes uh, before we kind of put some of the other stuff in. So, um, I can talk to you a little bit on the nutritional yeast. So the nutritional yeast has all of your B vitamins, which are super healthy, especially if you don't eat a lot of meat. Um, I love nutritional yeast because it tastes like cheese. So any dish where um, you want a little bit of a cheese flavor, that's when um, nutritional yeast come, comes into play. And then um, Jay Shree can talk a little bit more toward the end um, about more things um, from nutritional yeast. I can tell you, my dad, from a cooking perspective, I laughed at like Jennifer's comment on um, how she basically uh, made paper <laughs> <laughs> cooking, cooking what she cooked. Um, my dad told everyone that I literally could burn water because I did not know how to cook. And it is so true. And I was the kid that grew up eating loving cereal. And when my parents went away and did anything, they said, just give her some macaroni and cheese and she'll be happy. Like that's literally um, my favorite foods. Not now. <laughs> so it's uh, totally possible that you can actually cook some amazing meals because um, people are always asking for some of my recipes. Okay, so we are gonna cook that for a couple of minutes. It's probably been about a couple of minutes. The next thing that we're gonna put in there is curry paste. Now, if you're a Texan, you can put a lot more curry paste in there. If you're doing red, you probably don't wanna do more than a tablespoon. Yellow, oh, very hot. Um, yellow curry is um, not as hot. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of curry. I do about a tablespoon because I, I like things hot because I'm from Texas. So you'll put the curry paste in there. And then you just kind of mix all of that up. Again, another two minutes or so, just kind of get it all mixed up. I'm telling you, this is like the easiest recipe ever, especially when you have everything chopped up because you can make it so quickly. And we'll cook this a little bit more. Next thing that we will put in there is the coconut milk. So we're gonna put that in here, here in just a second. I already have all my stuff opened up. And when we put that in here, we're basically just gonna kind of bring it to a boil. So I'm gonna add it in now. and then mix all that up together. It smells so good. <laughs> so we're gonna make that boil just a little bit. It won't take long. And then the last piece literally is dumping everything else in. So we're gonna do um, a teaspoon of turmeric, which is super healthy. Um, we're going to do two tablespoons of coconut aminos, and we're going to do a tablespoon of maple syrup, and then we're going to dump the cauliflower and chickpeas. Now, the recipe on there, I always put more cauliflower in there than what the recipe says. So um, if you have a Trader Joe's, I literally get the Trader Joe's bag, and I dump the whole thing in there. I'll kind of chop it up a little bit so that it's not like really big pieces, but they're just like, you can kind of see, they're just kind of like pieces like this, or maybe a little bit smaller. So it makes it really easy to, um, to eat. We'll let this cook just a little bit longer. I'm gonna go ahead and get my So we do one teaspoon of turmeric. Go ahead and dump that in there. While it's kind of boiling, it's about to start boiling right now. Um, we have two tablespoons of coconut aminos. One. Two. Then 
then we have a tablespoon breaks it down of maple syrup she is I'm going to kind of mix all that in together. Mine's already starting to kind of boil a little bit. So then you're just going to dump in the chickpeas, which I already have here in the can. Dump it in there. And the cauliflower. I mean, how easy is that? You literally just kind of mix it all up. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to put a lid on it. Put it over like medium heat, cook it another 10, 15 minutes. Oops, I'm making a mess, just like I always do. I swear, I think my husband like cleans up that, behind me. That's why you keep Mike around. To clean exactly, up that's food. exactly right. <laughs> How I drive him bananas. That is literally it. So I'm just gonna cover this a little bit, put it on medium heat, and we're good to go. This recipe, you literally can put over like rice, you can put over quinoa, you can put it over um, lettuce and um, make it a lot of different ways. It's great because it can reheat. So it's like a dish that's so good. Like you can make it, um, reheat it, and then you're good to go. It makes, it's not a super big dish. So like if you're like me where there's only me, two people in our house, <laughs> then you make these big dishes. It's like, oh my gosh, what am I do with all this food? It doesn't make um, a super big dish. Usually, you know, you only have leftovers for one day. You might only have leftovers for, for one person. Um, so it's great for that. So that's kind of um, it. Let me kind of wrap it up a little bit and then we'll go back and answer any questions that people have and we'll make sure that, um, we'll make sure that we answer everyone's questions. So literally guys, um, we're just a community of people and there's really three ways of um, just, you know, people are on different journeys and we have three ways where we can kind of help you on that journey. So one way is just like, just adding more plants into your body, doing recipes like this. There's so many ways that we can provide different resources for you guys. And that could be just a, a starting place for you. Uh, the next phase is, you know, adding juice plus, you know, we all need extra. Oh my gosh. Especially with everything that's going on right now, anything that we can do to help improve our immune system. And if we look at our immune system, it starts in our gut. And that's 75% of it. And guess what? The bacteria in our gut, they feed off of plants. So the more that we can get into our body, the stronger our immune system is, the more we can fight off anything that's going to come out our way, which is so important right now. Uh, and the third way is maybe this is something, this is a message that really resonates with you. You Maybe you want to be a part of a community where you can grow and learn yourself. Um, there's so many, you know, the beauty of what I love about this community is the growth within within me, the growth from me just being a better um, teacher, the growth of me just having more confidence in myself, the growth of just learning more, being around people that are super uplifting and positive. Um, and that's a, a big part of what we do. And then just providing education to other people to really help people make better decisions about their health. And we need more people because this, this mission, I mean, if anyone's in healthcare and sees what's going on with healthcare and sees how we aren't able to like just, they're not helping people the way they need to be helped. We need more people out there um, like us to help spread this message. So if you're interested in learning more about what that is, definitely get with us. Um, and with that, I'm gonna have Jay Shree just jump in really quickly for any questions that um, people may have or post anywhere. So before we do questions, let's do our group picture. If um, everyone can turn on their camera and get in front of your camera and smile really big. Uh, okay. Gonna give it a second, hold on. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, and let's do a crazy one. So make a funny face and just go crazy. Okay, great. All right, so um, I just wanna say that I, I know we've run a couple of minutes past what we said we were gonna go to to four o'clock. So if anybody needs, that's fine. We're gonna be here for just a little bit to answer any questions. 
And I know we had that question on um, nutritional yeast. I, it's one of my favorite products. I use it on everything. I pretty much add it to everything that I eat. And I do so because it's a great source of um, B vitamins, as uh, Steffi mentions. It's it's source of B12. B12 actually comes from um, mi microbacteria that creates the B12 that's usually found in soil. Um, and so the reason why it's available in meat is because, you know, the cows eat the grass and then they, it's in their system. Um, but they get it because it's in the soil. So it's not really inherent to meat itself. It's to the microbacteria. So the nutritional yeast has that. It's got sodium. So it usually means that you use less salt because it gives that kind of salty flavor. Stephanie mentions it's cheesy. So it gives you that cheesy flavor. It's really good for your overall health and well-being because it feeds the good bacteria in your, in your gut, which we need that helps us with digestion. It's part of our immune system. There's actually been um, a study shown that people that eat a lot more nutritional yeast tend to get sick a lot less because it does boost the immune system. Now, nutritional yeast is different than baker's yeast, that the kind that you would use in bread, in the sense that it it can be eaten without cook being cooked. It can be eaten with, you know, it doesn't need to be mixed in. Whereas baker's yeast, you can't really eat the same way. Um, nutritional yeast looks like flakes. So it's kind of like, um, it's like you can, I have mine in a shaker bottle. So I just kind of like sprinkle it like you would Parmesan cheese on pretty much everything. Um, and it, it gives it a nice like flavor. So mm -hmm. I hope that answered mm -hmm. your question on nutritional yeast. Chris, did that answer your question? <laughs> I think she stepped away. <laughs> She's if, back if not, there. We, we have her recorded, so that's no big deal. She can yeah. go back and listen to the recording. <laughs> One last thing before we leave. Next month, we are doing another event similar to this, but because it's October and we're getting into like the crazy like sugar season with like Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas and parties. Well, maybe, we'll see. <laughs> It'll probably be different <laughs> this year, a little bit. Um, we're going to be putting together a presentation on why sugar is so bad and how it lowers our immune system. That really creates havoc <laughs> as far as us getting sick, which is even more important right now. So we'll go into a little bit of that, and then we're going to be making a few healthy treats. So be looking out for um, that for next month. I think we're going to do it the third um, weekend of October. It's probably going to be on a Saturday. I can't remember what date we actually said, but I think it was going to be on a Saturday um, afternoon. So I uh, just want to give you guys heads up for that. That'll be something fun that we will be doing virtually like this that you guys um, can come to as well. And the treats are amazing. Mm -hmm. The recipe is very fun. <laughs> I was hoping we were going to make some beer. Oktoberfest. <laughs> We could do that. We should have it. We should we should do something like that. Put Mike in charge of that. Exactly. Get all the guys together for that one. There you go. I have